you ever, ever need to lift your lonely spirit, oh. If you ever, ever need to fill your empty cup, oh. If you need a word, oh, just to make it through your day, yeah. overcome. It's Sunday night after church. Some of the church members go out for a late dinner at a nearby restaurant. They finish their dinner and all start to walk outside to go home. Oh, it's a little cold out here tonight. A little nip nip should have brought my good coat. I got my hat on. Woo. Mm. But wait a minute, girl. Woo Let me tell you. What? You was a beast on them drums tonight. Mm. Girl, she throwing that praise spray. <laughs> well, you know, what can I say? <laughs> Sometimes you got to show them how it's done. Right? Yeah. However, you know those praise breaks, they just don't hit right without Brother Gerard. Y'all know it's been three years Yeah, I know. I think all of us know that y'all like the only two musicians that can actually stay on beat. <laughs> right? I know right. Apparently, others have taken notice, like Brother Trevor. Oh. He was like, I need somebody to show me to play them drums like that. Oh. Boy, bye. Girl, he was just giving you a compliment. Yeah, you're tripping. I know, but it just seemed weird. You know, normally the drums don't get no love. You usually have the soloist, the preacher, or the praise leader. But again, the drummer don't get no love. Even still, when we worked on the Christmas play together, he was like, I think we should exchange numbers so that if we need to, we can, you know, FaceTime to rehearse lines. Mm -hmm. Why? I didn't want to, but I ended up giving him my number. <laughs> Girl, did he call you? No. Thank <laughs> God. Mm. Just then, Gemma, Gemma's phone rings. It's Brother Trevor. He asked her if he could discuss something really quickly before leaving the parking lot. He tells her that they can discuss this in his car since it's so cold outside. Gemma gestures to her friends she that going she's going to meet him. She gonna leave like that? Really? Brother Trevor didn't call her. Mm -hmm. oh, keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God and may your battles in the way they should may your bad days prove that God is good may your whole life prove that God is good. May your struggles keep you near the 
the cross and may your troubles show that you need God and may your battles in the way they should may your bad days prove that God is good and may your whole Since Gemma met with Brother Trevor in the restaurant parking lot. It's Sunday night and the service has just ended. Brother Gerard walks outside towards his car. Brother Kelvin, the men's president, catches up to him. Hey Gerard, wait up. Listen. I know you're the man's president and all, but you can stop calling me and stop texting me and stop running up my minutes. But I'm good, I promise you, I'm good. Well, you don't seem fine. And it's been a while since you seem fine. You don't answer your phone, your texts. You know, I try to get with you after service, but you're so quick to leave. Listen, I'm good, I promise you doesn't seem like it. I know since your sister's passing, it's been weighing on you. If you need to talk, I'm here. Talk about what? Talk about how I wasn't there for her? Talk about how my father wasn't there for her? Talk about how one of her friends thought it was a good idea to get behind of a wheel drunk? Man, what happened to your sister? It's not your fault. Well, my mother seems to think it was my fault. Wait, wait. What are you saying? Listen. <sighs> you know what? <sighs> I was supposed to be there to protect her. And I wasn't. And I, and I, and I was, and if I had not gone to that rehearsal, Everything would have worked out fine. There I was, <laughs> killing it on those keys, thinking I'm doing something, while my sister was being killed. If I'm no good to her, then I'm no good to anyone. For real. If you need to talk, I'm here for you, bro. All right, I'm gone. Kelvin knew he couldn't leave Gerard like that. So he got in his car and followed Gerard home to encourage him. In this life, we have to address our health, whether it is mental, physical, or spiritual. Proverbs 12, 25 says, Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down but a good word makes him glad. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. Proverbs seventeen twenty two says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Our mental, physical, and spiritual states of being are connected. If we're having issues physically, it can affect our mental and emotional state. If we're going through a traumatic or stressful event, it can affect our physical health. Both mental and physical issues can affect us spiritually. God cares about your health, all of it. He cares about our mental health, which is our, our mind and how we think. He cares about our emotional health, which is our feelings. He cares for our physical health, which is anything related to our body. If we experience a disruptive physical or emotional event, it can affect us mentally with how we think. This in turn can cause an emotional reaction 
a feeling that is then carried out physically through our actions. If you are having or are going through mental health struggles, know that you are not alone. Everyone at some point experiences some type of mental distress. The Bible has examples of this. This tells us that the people of the Bible had struggles just like we do. Tamar was King David's daughter. She was his only daughter among sons. One of those sons was named Amon. His feelings for his sister caused him to act physically towards her and violate her. Her brother's sin deeply affected Tamar's mental state. The Bible says after the entire incident she was hurt and uncomforted. Another manifestation of mental distress is grief. Grief is a reaction to any type of loss or distressful event. Death of a loved one, divorce, broken relationships, etc. Grief manifests as intense sadness, sorrow, misery, etc. Those intense feelings can cause us to react. Elijah was a great prophet of God, but even he suffered from mental distress. The Lord told Elijah to go to Ahab, the king of Israel. Elijah did and asked to face off with Ahab's prophets of Baal. Elijah built an altar of sacrifice for the one true God, and Ahab's prophets built an altar to their idol god, Baal. They called on this idol god from morning until noon, but there was no sound. No one answered. Then Elijah called on the Lord God of Israel, and the Lord demonstrated with fire that he was the only true God by consuming the sacrifice that Elijah made. Elijah then ordered the prophets of Baal to be killed. Ahab went and told Jezebel, the queen. She wasn't happy about Elijah killing the false prophets and promised she would kill him. Even though Elijah just did this amazing feat for the Lord, Fear came over him, and so he ran for his life out of town into the wilderness. He sat down and requested to die. Instead of the people of Israel grieved Elijah, the Lord saw Elijah's grief. He let Elijah rest. He sent angels to feed him. Then God spoke to Elijah with words of encouragement and instruction. These are just two examples of mental distress from the Bible. There are more examples, but the Bible also provides ways to get help. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. God can comfort us and he can use people to help people heal. Since meeting Brother Trevor two months ago, Sister Gemma hasn't been herself. Sister Bianca and Sister Felicia have been worried about her. She hasn't answered their phone calls or texts, so they decide to pay her a visit. Open up! Gemma! It's cold out here! Gemma! Not caught her! I know they did not show up to my house on the Gemma girl, come open this door. It's cold! What are y'all doing here? <laughs> crazy and I, I just needed some time to myself clearly y'all don't understand that really you ain't hanging out you ain't posting on Instagram I mean you've been saying this for like two months two weeks it don't matter you just keep saying it look I just said I've been tired work is crazy and I just needed some time to myself we're not leaving here till you tell us what's going on with you. You know, you ain't been right for the past two months. You know that night when Brother Trevor called? 
when we left after church at, eating at Fridays? Wait a minute. That's right, good she ain't saying nothing. She, she ain't talking. Emma, what did he do? Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait, girl, did he touch you? She still ain't talking. Gemma, what did he do? Gemma. Did he hurt you? Gemma What? <laughs> no, no, no Wait, she still ain't talking <laughs> She only got in the car What? <laughs> what you mean? This, is, this ain't on you, Gemma I can't believe it Mm-mm Listen <laughs> Listen <laughs> Gemma <laughs> This is not on you. It's on him. He's supposed to be the man of God. And he being a devil. It's not on you. Gemma, this is not your fault. He stole from you. He took your security. Your protection. You have to report him. No. It happened two months ago. Nobody is gonna believe me. It doesn't matter how long it's been. You have to report him. <laughs> we believe you, Gemma. We're your friends. You know we got you. We believe you. We're here with you every step of the way. We got you. <laughs> Brother Gerard has arrived to his house. He goes inside. Brother Kelvin arrives shortly after. He gets out of his car and knocks on Brother Gerard's door. Folks love coming to your house all late. What? You follow me home? And I had to. <sighs> God. What were you saying back there? Sounds like you were giving up. Listen, I just feel like a part of me died that night and, and I wish I wasn't here. I just, I just wish I wasn't here. If, if I'm no good to her, then I'm no good to anyone. Come on, man, taking, taking your life, it's not the answer. You know, when my dad left, I was, the weight and the responsibility was left on my shoulders. For years I took on that responsibility. I was 10 years older than her. God, I, I knew some of her friends was no good. But I never even said anything to her. God. The night that she was killed, I was supposed to be back by 11. But the rehearsal ran late. And we didn't get home till 1 a.m. My mother, she seems to think that, you know, she wouldn't have snuck out if I was home. Had I been home, I would have heard something. I would have heard a door crack, a, a, a horn, a, a, a car beep, something. It's all my fault. Come on, Gerard. You didn't fail as a brother. You loved her every day of her life. You were a great brother. Your sister loved you. She loved you. She loved you. You're the, you're, you're, you're the type of person that this world needs. You can still be a blessing to your brothers and your sisters in church. 
We need you. As a matter of fact, let's, let's go talk to the pastor. You know, maybe he has some resources. Come on, brother, let's pray. What do you do? You done all you can, and it seems like it's never enough. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do, you stand. Watch the Lord see you through. And after you've done all you can, you just stand. Their pastor counseled Gerard and then recommended he join the grief and loss meetings at a church they fellowship with. These meetings helped Gerard and others who suffered from losing loved ones and other losses like divorce and health. You know my cousin Cora, right? Yeah, the one that works at the women's shelter. <clears throat> yeah, well, she works there because it's where she found her help. Now the Lord uses her to help other people who've been hurt. But Cora seems like she's fine. She acts as if nothing has happened to her. You're right. It happened to her 12 years ago. She really changed after it happened. She became isolated, always jumpy. She's afraid of everything. Mm. She has trust, trust issues. She even has health issues. You see, that's the thing with traumatic events. They can wreak havoc on your body. It has an effect on you emotionally and spiritually. You know, it gives you post-traumatic stress syndrome. PTSD is what we know it. <sighs> mm. But see, that doesn't even feel right or even seem right. How, how did she get sick? How or why did she get sick? <clears throat> Trauma and chronic stress, it affects the body. You can actually get physically sick, Gemma. You know, you definitely will get sick if you don't seek your healing and get help. Look, Gemma, don't let what brother Trevor do you cause you to lose yourself anymore. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Don't just take back your life. Win it back. Winning it back means you have the victory. You end with, with the prize, not the enemy. Whether it's been two months or 12 years, suffering for someone else's sin, it's just way too long. <laughs> yep, she's right. So we're going to call Cora, and she's going to tell us how we can get you help, and she's going to help us report them. <laughs> We got you. <laughs> Tell me how do you handle the guilt of your past? <laughs> Tell me how do you deal with the shame? How can you smile 
when your heart has been broken and filled with pain so much pain oh, tell me how do you handle the guilt of your past tell me how do you deal with the shame well you just stand when there's nothing left to do you just stand and watch the lord see you through cause after you've done all you can you just stand we got you what do you do when you're giving your all and seems like you can't make it through now you just stand when there's nothing left to do you just stand watch the lord see you through just after you've done all you can oh after you've done all you can after you've done all you can after you've done all you It's been a few weeks since we last saw Brother Gerard and Sister Gemma. They both sought help through the help of their friends and decided to attend service. Missionary Stella is giving last words before concluding the service. God, we just thank the Lord, hallelujah, for being here. I know things have been rough and tough for us. Amen. Glory to God, but God is going to see us through. Yeah. Hallelujah, we are here. We're still alive in the land of the living. Hallelujah. When we go through things, we need to come together, be amongst each other, lift each other up, encourage each other, exalt one another. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Not to forsake the similar of our Jesus, when we come together, we can strengthen one another, we can encourage one another. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Brother Gerard, hallelujah. Oh God, he's on the organ. Oh, he hasn't done that in years. 
Oh, Brother Kevin, wait up, wait up. I just want to thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for sticking with me and, and praying for me and, and just hanging in there. I didn't even know how far I was down, how depressed I was and how lost I was. But I'm so glad that you continued to pray for me and you saw that. And if it wasn't for you praying for me and, and, and bringing me to the pastor for counseling and, and, and taking me for grief support, I don't know what I would be doing without you, man. I just, I'm just, I'm just so glad that I, I know what it's like now to be delivered. Oh God, he delivered me. And I hope that one day I can help somebody else just to be delivered. Oh God, I thank you. Oh, I just got to shake your hand again. Lord, deliver me. Cause all I seem to do is hurt me. Hurt me.
delivering me. And it was because of your grace and your mercy it saved me. Delivered me. It healed me. It saved me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You renew my mind. You restored my strength. Said you gave me everything I need. And that's why I can say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You did it for me. You did it for me. And he'll do it for you. Yes. That's why I say, Thank you, Lord. 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 Can we stand up over this place? Can we just stand to our feet, hallelujah, and begin to bless the Lord? Can we just stand to our feet just for a few minutes? And I know this is a play, but hallelujah, he's delivering somebody right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he's delivering somebody right now. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care who took your innocence. I don't care who's gone from your life. You will be restored. You can be renewed. It won't be like this. Can I get a witness that it won't be like this always? I need to hear from somebody who's been through this. I need to hear from somebody who's been through this. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Because it could have been another way. Some of us, I don't know about how many of you, but some of us, we made many attempts to take our lives because we thought that it just didn't work out, that it wasn't going to, that it was just going to do what it was supposed to do, that there was no healing, there was just no way out. We thought the only way out as if I put myself in the grave. But I'm so glad that he's already been to the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's already worked that thing out for us. So we don't have to be in the state that we are in. I know we think saints don't get depressed, but yes we do. We get sad, yes we do. Sometimes we fall in those pits, hallelujah, but I'm so glad. That he gives us what we need. He gives us pastors, elders, deacons. And then he just don't stop there. He gives us resources. People who can reach a little bit further to help us identify the problem so that Jesus can come in. So that he can have the final say. Oh God, and I just want to thank you. Oh, and I'm grateful on tonight, hallelujah, that he'll do just that. He'll do just what he said. Oh, I'm a witness when he said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. It's all right to tell God, thank you. We in church on today, it's all right to tell God, thank you. Oh, hallelujah. And if you've never been through it, you ought to really tell God, thank you. If you never wanted to take your life, you ought to really thank God he's, that he's a keeper. 
that he's a deliverer and that I can tell somebody else oh taste and see that the Lord that the Lord is good come on over with a table express and the feast of the Lord is going on hallelujah Talking about the 